Good morning, everyone. My name is Abdul Ghani Oguno. I am a task practitioner, or let me say, I used to be a task practitioner, but presently I work as an auditor with one of the big four firms. So you are lucky to be here. So you stand to gain more than your colleague out there. So we are ICANN online tutors again. We have been in this business for some, for quite some time. And uh, let me say we are launching our site and classes uh, for the first time, you know, online, for the first time online. And that's why we have people joining from, you know, Abuja, Baoshi, they my Lagos people. Okay, so I may was unable to unmute his or her mic, so we don't know where he or she has joined from. But nevertheless, we want to believe she also joined us from Nigeria. And, you know, we can also have people from Ghana, <laughs> South Africa, anywhere. Okay, so that is the beauty of Internet of Things. So we have, you know, uh, take it up to, but let me say, we embrace technology, you know, by making things easy for everyone, including the lecturer, as well as the students. So this CITN market, I call it market, okay? So meaning we are all here to do business. So we are not here, we are not here to play. So my class should always be an interactive one. So when I'm coming to my class, please, please feel free, you know, be enthusiastic to you know join my class. Then when you are in class, try to be active in the class because it goes a long way. Okay, so every house starts from the foundation. So when the foundation is not solid, then it means whatever is you know built on the foundation uh, may probably not last. So recently we've had a uh, different different news, or let me say. And most especially from Lagos, we have collapse of building and the likes, not just one and not two. Okay, so why? Most of this has to do with the foundation. So there is one that happened was not in Banana Island. Okay, so from the video we could we could see that, you know, the building. It, it's it's glaring that the foundation is you know is weak, because the way the building collapsed, one could see that. Wow, without a solid foundation, then whatever uh, is built on that uh, structure, which is called foundation, uh, will not last long. So that's why it is important. And you can't compare people that start a professional course from the foundation level with those that just write probably they took exemption and write one paper at the professional level or, you know. So we are starting from introduction to taxation, introduction to taxation. So because everything in sighting is about tasks. Everything in sighting is about tasks because that's bedrock of the work of the Institute. So now you need to know how has this taxation come about? So who introduced taxation to, to us in Nigeria? Or have you been paying tax even before uh, the colonial era? Okay, so these are the things you need to know. And I want to believe uh, most of us are working class. Am I correct? Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, you yes, uh, yes, you're correct. Yes. That's that's fine. So, so I want to believe I'm I'm speaking to my colleague, you know, in the uh, labor market. So, and I'm very sure the word task or transition is not new to us. Okay. So the reason why I ask if we're all working already is, you know, by one way or the other, we must have had something like tasks, 
whether be it pay as you earn or income tax. Okay, so even pay as you earn is also a subcategory of income tax under the personal income tax. Okay, so but specifically it is for those that are working class. I mean, oh, no, no, working class is still a broad, you know, adjective. So let me just use uh, salary earners. Okay, so individuals who are in an employment contract. Okay, so now, pay as you earn is an actual tax. Okay, so I mean, it is pay on actual basis. So at the end of the month, immediately you are receiving your salary, your employer is as a duty to, you know, deduct from source, then remit to the relevant statutory, uh, you know, authority, relevant tax authority within the time bound. Okay, so in this class, we'll be looking at the definition of tasks <clears throat> and transition. So is there any difference between tasks and transition? I'm going to ask you that question. So if you like, you can start your research now. Okay, so just prepare your mind. I'm asking you a question, the difference between tasks and transition. So one might say, oh, task is task, then transition is task that has action. So when we get there, we find out better. Then we look at the objectives of tasks or objectives of transition. So why are we paying tasks? What's the use of tasks? What's it used for? Okay, so what's the benefit of transition? So these are the things you know we are going to look at as we progress in the class. Then the basic concept of transition. So we look at the principles or canals of transition, the differences between taxes and levies with other charges. Okay, or let me just say differences between taxes and other payments. So we look at multiple taxation because in Nigeria we have different different type of tasks. Just name it, mention it. Starting from the local government level up to the state level and the federal government level. So you cannot even count the number of taxes we have, but you can still count. Okay, so it depends on your brackets. Okay, then we look at voluntary donation and tasks, resistance to taxation, history of taxation, taxation in pre colonial and colonial periods, taxation in Nigeria, post independence, then reasons why governments collect taxes. And do we even have a justification for collecting tasks? So this will be practical, okay? There is no note under this uh, table of contents 14, okay? So I want it to be practical. So from what you've seen in your local area, in your state, at the federal government level, have we even seen the justification for all these multiple taxes we are all paying? So have you even seen the justification for this tax revenue? So we are going to discuss that um in detail so towards the end of the class so that will probably be like a cues or an interactive section at the end of my class okay so at the end of the class we summarize whatever we have learned so far then i have some work example for you so let's start again at the end of this class you should understand the meaning historical background of taxation basic concept of taxation blah 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 then the classification objectives, types, and principles of taxation and sources of tax laws, and then multiple taxation, and then multiple taxation. Okay, so, so let me see if I have new students in the class. Okay. Please, so if you know anyone that is writing CIT and exam starting from the foundation level please feel free to ask them to join us. It is free. No money for today's class, so no money, no money, no money. So what is transition? Oh, sorry, we are starting with task first. Oh, why am I showing my screen safe? Oh yeah, so this is quiz time. I want to ask a question. So Mubarak, what is task? So you tell us what is task then. Uh, Afalabi should tell us what is is transition. 
So tax is uh, a certain amount of uh, money uh, that is collected by government from uh, maybe certain individuals who have uh, based on some criteria. It is compulsory that such uh, people should make uh, the certain contributions as a certain payments must be paid, whether you like it or not. It's something that is not, uh, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, it's not negotiable whether I should pay. If you, if you meet such criteria, then you have to pay government tax as you have to pay certain amount of uh, money to the government since you are a citizen of that country or you work in that country or something like that. Okay, okay, you've tried, you've tried, you've tried. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have any gift for now, but at least being the first class, I'm impressed. So Afolabi, what is taxation? Um, taxation should be the, it, it, it's all encompassing. So from the imposition of the levy, like he said, um, the administration and policy guiding the administration of tax itself. So taxation is more like a verb, why the tax is like a noun. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Um, uh, oh yeah, let's go right side right, saying exam. I'm happy that <laughs> I have this set of people in the first class. So it means I will not be struggling to explain some concept of transition. So like I said earlier, I like my class to be an interactive one because I'm also here to learn. Nobody knows it all. Okay, so it's fine. So that's the difference between task and transition. So one <clears throat> is basically the leveling of what leveling of or imposition of a levy. The levy, not a uh, development levy, not uh, society, or let me call it community levy or security levy. Okay, so the levy we are referring to in this case, okay, so is imposed. So you must pay it and there will be no direct benefits. So you can say, you know, for security levy now, I, um, I've paid my security levy to my landlord. My landlord must pay it to the community. And the community must ensure that the security guards are working 247 in some, in some instances. In some other instance, it will, be, it will always be at night. Abby? Okay, so you are paying development levy in your society, in your institute. Okay, so as a student now, there is a development levy you must pay. So we are getting it, we are asking you to pay it. In fact, before you be eligible to write your exam, you must pay. At the registration uh, point, you pay. Okay, so all professional bodies has their own development levy. Okay, and after you qualified, if you join your district, you'll be asked to pay development levy too. We need to develop our society. We need to develop our community. So for that levy, there is a, there is a direct benefit, isn't it? There is a direct benefit, but for task, this levy is compulsory and it is imposed upon, upon the citizen, okay? In a particular word, jurisdiction, okay? So, and who imposed this? It is the government, okay? So it is the government, it is the government that imposed what? That imposed this levy on who? That imposed the levy on the citizen. That's one part. So what are they getting from the citizen? So income tax. They are getting what? Income tax from the citizen. Not only citizen, they are also imposing what? They are imposing on property. What are they getting on property? They are getting what? Capital gains tax. They are getting what? They are getting capital gains tax. Okay. Also, from the citizen, they are also getting what? They are getting indirect tax. So I like to use the word indirect tax. Why? 
Because under these indirect tasks, we have value added tasks. Where you name it or name them. So apart from value added tasks, what are the other, other types of indirect tasks that you know? For oh, my country people. Um, what? Um, custom have, duties. Yeah, yeah, you have customs and SIs duties. Okay. But yeah, apart from that, in call. Consumption tax. Yes, that's for my people in Lagos. Yes, yes. Other states. So yeah, after that, in call. Personal income tax. Mm, personal income tax is under this. So for this one now, there are type of there are what direct tax. There are direct tax. So income tax is for companies and individuals. Okay, so and don't forget that in transition we have two types of citizens. Who are they? So I will tell you one. We have individual citizens. Then the other one. Oh yeah, now. Oh yeah, let's talk. Oh. Anyway, we have corporate citizens too. Oh, Juju, Abi, we have corporate what corporate citizen. So when will a company be be said to be an it's a, a be a citizen in Nigeria? Any company that is incorporated in Nigeria, okay. Incorporated under what? Under the Corporate Affairs Commission of Nigeria, CAC, Christ Apostolic Church. <clears throat> so, any words, any company incorporated, duly incorporated under the you know, Corporate Affairs Commission of Nigeria is what? Is an incorporated citizen. Is what? Is a corporate citizen in Nigeria. And such company is what? Is also liable to income tax. Okay. Such company is also liable to is also liable to income tax. So again, tax is a compulsory levy or financial charge imposed on a taxpayer. Who are the taxpayer? Both what corporate citizen and what an individual individual was individual citizens. Okay, so or upon his property by the government to provide security, social amenities, and other amenities for the well-being of the society. So please, from this place, to provide what? Security, social amenities, and other amenities for the well-being of the society. So at the end of this class, we want to see practically in our country, is it truly that there is justification for what? For the collection of that? Because in our definition, we mentioned that what it is used to provide or to be, to, to be used, you know, for the provision of security, social amenities, and other amenities for the well-being of the society. Are we good to go? I have a question. OK, OK, no problem. OK, so <clears throat> that's that. So why transition is what is the process? Is what is the process of levying or collecting, okay? So let me say the collection and then, uh, okay, we start with the imposition, okay? And then collection of taxes from what? From the taxable persons. <clears throat> so don't, uh, don't let me mislead you by just saying that it is only the corporate citizen and individual citizen that pay tax in Nigeria, okay? So non-resident, Non-resident what? Non-resident company. Non-resident company also pay tax in Nigeria. And what are the non-resident company? These are the companies that are that are incorporated with the corporate affairs commission in other countries other than Nigeria. So if your company is incorporated with the corporate affairs commission, uh, let's say uh, in Syria alone or let's say in the US, okay? So it means that your company is what? Your company is a non-resident company. Your company is a non-resident company for task uh, purpose. So when will a non-resident company be liable to task? We discuss that in another class. Okay, so 
Let's proceed. So we have various definition of tasks. Okay, we have various definition of tasks and if we have to take them one after the other, we may spend like 30 minutes or more. Okay, so because at different scholars, professors, you know, lecturers and the likes has defined taxation in different ways and they are all meaningful. Okay, so do you know Tejutas? Do you all know Tejutas? Okay, so Tejutas is uh, owned by Teju Shomarin. I believe she's uh, one of the past uh, CITM presidents. Okay, so, <clears throat> So Teju Shomori is her name. So she defined it as, as the levy by what? By public authorities. Levy by what? Levy by public authorities. Levy by what? By public authorities <clears throat> with a jurisdiction. With a jurisdiction. So what do we call jurisdiction? So for instance, now let me, okay, let me just put it simple, a geographical area, okay? So with a geographical area, within a geographical area of compulsory, it is a must, compulsory what? Contribution, compulsory contribution by the citizens, by the citizens to defray part to defray, to defray part of the cost, to defray part of the cost of government activities, part of the cost of government activities, part of the cost of government activities in providing the needs of the society, in providing the needs of the society in providing the needs of the of the society okay so sorry i'm taking my time to write the definition down okay so as you can see from the screen so we have different various definition so and i can't put everything on the screen okay so again, by Teju TAS, TAS is levied by public authorities. So who are the public authorities? So let's say the government, okay? Though government may not have its delegated agency, such as the FIRS in Nigeria, the LIRS in Lagos. We have the OYIRS in Oyo State. Then we have FCT IRS in Abuja, that's the Federal Capital Territory uh, Internal Revenue Service, Abuja. Then we also have, uh, let me go to uh, River States, RIRS, so River States, uh, sorry, RS, IRS, River States Internal Revenue Service. Then we also have data, we have the data board states of internal revenue. So we have data board states of uh, internal revenue. So in simple terms, SAS is a compulsory contribution levied by a sovereign power. What are the sovereign power? What was the sovereign power? Government on the incomes, profits, good. So for incomes, we've taken in, uh, income charge. We have companies income tax and we have personal income tax. And then profits for profits. So it depends. So we have under the personal income tax, we have the petroleum profit tax. Okay. Then on goods, we have the value added tax. Then on services, we also have value added tax. We have withholding tax and the likes. Then our properties. So that's where we have the capital gains tax. And then corporate persons, trusts, and then settlements. 
So this is what this is just a simple definition of tax. Then okay, so other definitions can be gleaned from judicial precedents. Other definitions can be gleaned from judicial precedent. So let's see the case of Matthew versus Shikori Marketing Board of Victoria, Australia. Matthew versus Shikori Marketing Board of Victoria, Australia. The Chief Justice, who has to be a Latin, divine task as a compulsory exaction of money. Compulsory exaction of money. That is, as a taxpayer, you should know what to pay. Okay, so compulsory exaction of money by public authority for public purposes. Or taxation is raising money for the purpose of government by means of contributions from individual persons. So, you know, who are the governments? We are all the governments. Okay, so we are all governments. That's just the bitter truth. Okay, so we only have some people who we have chosen you know, to direct us, who we have chosen to lead us, okay? Because without we, the citizens, who are they? And don't forget, they are also from us, okay? They are from within us. So in the, uh, by this time last month, okay? So our president was Muhammad Dubari, okay? But today, we have Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Sinungu. So you can see. So in the next coming years, so it will be someone else we don't know for now. Okay. So that's just it. So these people are also what they are also from within us. Okay. So now we contribute the money they use to run this government. So we contribute the money we they use to what they use to run this government. So if we all should seize, you know, to uh, if we should all seize to uh, to obey our civic obligation or to perform our civic obligation, then they can't last in government. Okay, so because they have nothing to eat there, where do they get money to pay their salary? Where do they get money to, to run? You know, government is also like a business. So without money, there is no business. So without money, there is no government. Okay. So in other words, tax is described as a form of levy imposed on all the residents living in, as well as non-residents doing business. So I mentioned this earlier that we also have non-residents. So we are as we, so just like we have non-resident company, we also have non-resident individuals. So non-resident individuals are those that are not citizens of Nigeria and have not sojourned in Nigeria for a period of more than 186 days in a year, okay? So, and then, okay, so let me continue with my definition. So task is also described as a form of levy imposed on all residents living in, as well as non-resident doing business within a task jurisdiction. So I've defined this task jurisdiction to be a geographical area. Okay, to be a geographical area. So it is a civic and patriotic responsibility of citizens. So you should not be forced to pay your tax. Though it is a levy that is imposed on us because you are not getting a direct benefit. So unlike the security levy I mentioned the other time, unlike the development levy I mentioned the other time, you know, those ones, you get a direct benefit. You get direct benefits in as much that you pay your levy as a went deal. So it is a civic and patriotic responsibility of citizens to pay taxes imposed, which also come to the government as income or revenue, yielding device to finance the provisions of social economic infrastructure, security, and also to enhance industrial efficiency. Okay, so. That's, uh, you know, how far we can go on the definition of tax. So, so hard to it, taxation is basically was 
is basically the process. Okay, is what is the process. The process of what? The process of levying. The process of what? The process of levying. So you just add ing. The process of what? Of levying, imposing, and what? And then collection of taxes. Collection of what? Collection of taxes from taxable persons within a particular location. Within a what? Within a tax jurisdiction. Within a tax jurisdiction. So, who are the taxable person? There was there are residents living in a you know in a community within the local government, states, and at the national level. So, then as well as non-residents, okay, non-residents are uh, doing business uh, in Nigeria. So let's move to the essential of a good tax system. What are the essential of a good tax system? So let me throw out the question. Shidima, good morning. You are welcome to class. My name is Abdul Ghani Yogno. I will be a facilitator for this class introduction, uh, sorry. At uh, principles of taxation. So once again, you are welcome to I can. So it looks like I can. No, I can. So if I can, then you too, so you can successfully write this exam and pass. Okay, so Shidima, where have you joined us from? <clears throat> Hello, Shidima. Good morning. Thank you. I'm joining for um from I think I joined you guys on YouTube. I subscribe on YouTube. So I'm getting to, so I spoke to one of you guys last week. So okay. I just saw the link and I joined. So maybe I will continue with him. So this is my first class okay. though. Yes. Oh, that's so, fine. So from Lagos State, Maryland. Lagos State. Yes, Maryland. Oh, the I budget. I Ah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, actually, yes, so. Okay, so yeah, welcome to our, our Excel class. Yeah, welcome to our Excel class. Okay, so we are all going to be successful in this diet. That's for sure. So, in as much, we are always present in the class. So we have been in this business for long and we are happy, you know, you are willing to be our customer. Okay. Yeah. So sure we have we all have a favorable business at the end of this diet. So by next diet, also join us at the professional one level. Then so in the next three diets, we want to be proud of Shidima that oh Shidima is once our student. And yes. at I can I can online to those so IOT. So we are always proud of our students. So uh, for our I can class, so we also have our students joining us, you know, as a lecturer. So that's one of the beauty of being part of I can online to those. So class though, because I'm writing for CITN. Okay, you're writing for CIPM. CITN, CITN. Okay, okay, CITN. Uh, yes, no problem. So once you are, you are done with your CITN, we'll be happy to receive you. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. You joined the class late, so we have not really done much so far. Okay. But the beauty of this is that it's being recorded. Okay, so you can always have access to the recorded, uh, you know, video at the end of the class. So, please, if you have any of your friend that is also writing slides in at the foundation level, please invite them to join this class. Okay, so it's 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 real. It has always been a wonderful session for us, and hopefully, this one should also not be an exemption. Okay, so 
Okay. Here we are essential, essential the good stars system. Since people are having issues with their network, they are just coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. So no problem. So a good task system should you know, create jobs. A good task system should, should create jobs. So I was listening to uh, one of these invest, uh, investment analysts on the TV during the week. And he said, these 800 billion uh, or 800 million dollar, whatever that the government is, you know, bringing from the World Bank as a palliative. Instead of distributing this money to the citizens, we can what we can use it on investments that will create job opportunities. At least the government will be boastful of employing nothing less than 5,000 citizens. So by creating jobs. So in his opinion, he mentioned that uh, government can just channel the money into transportation. Okay, so by buying uh, like 18 seaters, uh, buses, then get dry. So in each local government, at least there should be uh, like 18 or 20 uh, buses. So when you have 20 buses in each of the local government, you have like 774 local governments in Nigeria, so with this, you employ, so if you multiply 20 per local government, 20, so you know you are employing 20 drivers, right? So 20 multiplied by 774 local government we have in Nigeria. That is a number. Then you, you can't just have drivers. So you also have people that will administer or manage the dri these drivers. Okay. So you have people that will manage these drivers. So by the Investing this 800 billion in transportation system, it goes a long way. It creates job opportunities for nothing less than 5,000 Nigerians. That being said, just imagine that's a money that's supposed to be used as a palliative uh, or distributed to the citizen to caution the effect of subsidy in Nigeria, uh, the subsidy remover, uh, you know, especially on the poor. Just now imagine. How much is the revenue Nigeria is generating from tax in a year? Okay, so let's even say one trillion naira. One trillion naira. Okay, so if Nigeria is generating one trillion naira from tax as revenue in a year, imagine even if it is just twenty percent of it that is used on infrastructural projects, okay, on investments, okay, to create job opportunities for the individual. Won't that reduce our unemployment rate in the country? So what I'm saying here is that in a country that there is a good tax system, okay, so, and that's why you see our people, you know, jackpying. Okay, so that's why people are leaving the country. So, Shidima, I don't know your plan. So, probably in the next two weeks, you just phone in and say, ah, a guy lecture, you will sit down for Nigeria. Man, I don't jack power. And you understand? So, why? Because you are going to a place where everything is working fine, where they have a good tax system. You go to Dubai, you enjoy everything, you enjoy, you, you, you enjoy the atmosphere. You go to the UK anywhere okay so especially in the advanced countries okay so and that's why people will continue to leave the country okay that's why it was people we was people we continue to leave the country because we felt that our government is not doing up to our what we expect from them Okay, so a good tax system should create jobs, you know, reduce wasteful expenditure. Okay, reduce what wasteful expenditure. A good tax system should also, you know, create infrastructural, uh, you know, projects. So government should be able to use the money, the revenue from tax to construct infrastructural projects 
let's have good roads. When there is good roads, people will be able, people doing business, uh, you know, we have a reduced cost of transportation. Okay, so revenue from TAS should also be used to uh, improve uh, our, our security uh, infrastructure. Okay, so let's spend money on security projects. Okay, so the guys in the uh, Nigerian Army, Air Force and the likes, let, let them be well equipped. Let's pay them well, okay? So since the advent of Boko Haram, we can't count the number of soldiers, all these security guys that have lost their life. Most of them, their family are now in pain. Most of them, their family are even nowhere to be found because their breadwinner has, was, has gone. Their breadwinner has been dealt with by these uh, Boko Haram people. Now, there is insecurity in the country. Then what, what is our government's personnel, our leader? What are they using the money they are collecting from us to do? Because we are contributing this money for them to run the system. So just like the security levy you are paying your community, okay? So you've been paying your security levy, nobody is owing the security guides and what's just all of a sudden, you started having attacks from arm robbers, woodlums and the likes. So, you know, you ask yourself a question, we had the security guards. Do we still have the security guards? You know, so because you believe that you are paying for it, then you should see what you are, you should enjoy the service you, you, you know, you are paying for. So essential of a good tax system is that the government should create jobs, let it be good infrastructure in place, let's improve our security amenities, social amenities, and legs, and we should reduce wasteful expenditure. Okay, so, and that led us to the objectives of taxation. So what's the purpose of collecting tax? What's the essence of taxation? So taxation is used, number one, that's the primary objective, is for revenue generation. Because government is the money they generate from tax to finance various projects. They pay their salaries from it. Okay, so they run the government. You know, I told you the government is a business. So they run the business from it. Okay, so then also they uh, construct road, okay, other infrastructure projects, they build schools, you know, for the citizens, hospitals and the likes. Okay, so these are what, these are where the money are coming from. And I can remember there was a day someone told me, should we even be thanking the government for any projects uh, you know, they do for us? He said in the advanced country, citizens don't thank their government for doing something for them. Because why? The reason is they contribute, you know, they contributed the money. So they are spending their money and they are even getting salary from them, you know, from that. So why should they thank them? So there was a place in Scotland, okay? So the guy there was telling me that he's using the uh, bus transport system. So the bus has a capacity of 80 passengers. The bus has the capacity of 80 passengers. But then, because they have time of departure and time of arrival, arrival time, okay? So he said, Immediately, it is time for them to depart. They are just uh, maybe like eight or 10 in the bus. So he said, the, 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 the bus departed the, uh, the station, having just eight passenger in it. And they are going on a three, on an eight hours journey. They are going on an eight hours journey. So, and it's not as if the boss is speaking 
uh, passengers by the road, okay? So because it is a it is a one way stuff. So he said they spent like eight hours having just eight or ten passengers in a bus that has the capacity of eighty passengers. So let me ask you, Shidima, have you experienced that in Lagos before? So you are traveling from Lagos, let's say just to Ibadan. Ibadan, okay, let me just say Ibadan. And you want to commute a bus from Lagos, a bus that has 80 passenger capacity, and you have just eight of you in it. Will the bus depart the bus garage? The garage? No, it won't. It won't. We have to, um, um, the bus have to get full. I withstanding after having everybody see have you see see them calling for calling for standing 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 come and stand come and stand look at even this girl Lagos boss mm -hmm. so that's where we are in this part of the world okay so it means that the revenue they are generating is not adequately used for provision of public goods. Do you know what public goods are? Shidema, what are public goods? Hello, Shidema. I mean, I didn't get that, please. So do you know what public goods are? No, I no. Okay, an example of a public goods, is the road you are using okay okay so that is the use is not restricted to anyone irrespective of your tax we are going to the lagos island now from maryland is either you pass through if we do go and follow stadium follow a co-bridge okay or you follow the third mainland bridge if Dangote is on the mainland and he doesn't feel like using shoppers, he wants to follow, he wants to go by the land. If he wants to go by land, did I also follow the mainland and uh, Korodu Road through Stadium or Bridge or use the mainland, isn't it? Yes. So that's an example of what we do. So there's no restriction. You know, who and we can use it. And it's not as if if Dangote is flying the road now, he enjoys or he derives a benefit that is unique. Okay, so it's the same if there's no traffic, if there's no traffic, you spend the same amount of time, isn't it? Yes, it does. If there's no breakdown. And you are using good car, you have the same enjoyment. So that's an example of public goods. Another example of public goods is uh, all these pedestrian bridge. Okay, flyover. You understand? So there's no restriction to the use. Even if the president is coming to uh, is in Lagos now and he wants to move from Maryland, let's say from Maryland to and maybe a jota. Okay, from Maryland to Jota. So you will also use that same Odoala Road Bridge, isn't it? Yes, sir. You use that same Odoala Road Bridge. So it means that we are all equal. So there's no restriction in that problem. So then we have merit groups. We have us. We have merit groups. So that's another was that's another objective of the tax system, which example of which is S. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Health and then education. Okay. So unlike road now, you know, that one is pure public good. So everyone can use it, whether you are educated, an illiterate person, and like, okay? So whether you go to school or you do not go to school. But health, 
Mary's food. Okay, that is okay. what the Mary's goods. Education is a Mary's goods. Are we all educated in Nigeria? No. <laughs> mm. So now, though these two should also not be left entirely into the hands of the private people. Otherwise, imagine me or I do not attend private university. Okay. So, and today, I'm happy. I'm working with one of the big four. And if they have attended back, I've attended uh, Covenant University. Okay. So, in my workplace, we are all colleagues. In my workplace, we are all, we are all colleagues. So, irrespective of your background, the institution you attended, and the likes, do you understand? So, that's meaning that if education has been left entirely in the hands of what, of the private sector, okay, or private investors, it means that many of us will not have the opportunity of going to of going to school. I hope that is understood. Yes. For head too, it's not everyone that can afford going to private hospital using their facilities and the likes, okay? But if there is general speech, if there is general speech, okay? Or a public uh, clinic and the likes. So it is for all, okay? So, and in Lagos, okay, in Lagos, we have some of these general speech that they even have, you know, they are well equipped than some of the private hospitals. Am I right? They have professionals, they have yes. surgeons, you know, yeah. and the As I'm mostly in teaching hospitals. Exactly. So even than the private hospital. So in a private hospital, you probably see just one doctor, two doctors doing everything. But in the general hospital, they have specialists. Yes. Like, okay. So and that's the reason why the health system should also not be left entirely in the hands of private investors. Okay, so then we also have, uh, okay, the merit group. So governments can use tasks to discourage consumption of harmful demerit groups. So what are demerit groups? So for instance, now, cigarettes, we have alcohol. So recently, you see governments increasing uh, or introducing a new task on consumption of uh, carbonated drinks. Okay, so because they have seen the effects and the, the, the effect, the implication of consuming too much of these products, and government is also looking at either introducing new taxes or increasing the existing tax rate on importation of some of those and some of these in merit groups. Okay, so you can see governments, you know, banning Tramadol and some other 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 demerit groups. So governments can use tax to discourage consumption of all these samples. So for instance, now on cigarette now, government can say that okay, if you are importing cigarettes what of one billion naira, okay? So you are paying tax of what? You are paying tax of 60%. Do you understand? So, you know, people doing business, doing cigarette business and likes, you know, they, they, they want to have a kind of rethink. Uh, is this business still profitable? Why are we paying so much to business? So indirectly, they want to increase the unit price of you know, the cigarettes that are selling to those that it is. Yeah. Okay. So, and if a stick of cigar, if a stick of cigar is not going for 1,000 naira, mm -hmm. you know, one way or the other, the government has reduced the number of people that will be consuming so it. Yeah. Because there are some average Nigerians 
If I don't let me use average, average is still better. There are some Nigerians that they are poor to the extent that on a day they hardly spend up to thousand men on a day. So is it someone that does not feed himself? Though there are some people that they take these cigarettes on an empty stomach. Some people add it. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know why. And you see them begging, begging you for money. You see them begging you for money. But still, they take that cigarette without eating. You now see them, some people, they will, be, they will just be like a, a stick of boom. So, because the money that they are supposed to use to take good care of themselves, they are using it to consume consume all this cigarette and the, you know, it's taking gin and the likes. Then another objective of taxation is distribution of income and wealth. So let's take money from the rich and let's redistribute to the poor, to the poor people, okay? So now we spoke about health and education the other time. Building general hospitals, you know, building schools, start from primary schools, secondary schools and uh, our institution. Okay, so now let's take education tasks as an example. Education tasks. Okay, so now this education task is imposed on companies, on Nigerian companies. Okay, now recently, government, you know, last year through the finance act of 2021, the rate was increased from 2% to what? To 2.5%. Now, the finance act of 2022 that was signed on March 28th by the, uh, by the past president has increased the education tax rate to 30% from 2.5%. And why are the ones paying this education tax? The investors in Nigeria, the Nigerian companies, people doing business in Nigeria that are Nigerians, Okay, or the foreigner that has company in Nigeria. So in that case now, they are collecting this money and spending it on what? Spending it on the education sector. Spending it in the education sector. So you see in your school, you attended a public school, be it state or federal government school. Okay, so you see some building. Okay, so they tell you third fund. Have you seen that before? Third fund. I, I, I've seen it. Yes. Excuse so, me. I'm I'm curious now. Um, at this saying, I thought uh, most schools, like federal schools, the, the government sponsored the, most of the the stuff. Though though I, I, I attended a federal school though, that's um yeah, but take. I know we paid so, school fees, but is it that they collect tax from that school fees you're paying? No, no, they don't collect tax from the school fees. Uh -huh. The education okay. task is paid by companies. Companies. Oh. Yes, companies. Are you working now? Am I saying I'm working? I'm just, I'm in between for now. So I'm a nursing mother. So I'm just wow, in between. Wow, wow. Yes. Okay. So, but nursing have you worked with any organization before? Yes, I have. I have. Not mm, so, per se. Yeah. Okay, so in that company, so is it a limited company or a business enterprise? Enterprise, not so limited business company. Enterprise. Business enterprise, yeah. So if it has been a limited liability company, okay. okay. So you must have, you must have seen it in their books, paying what, paying education tax. So education tax is paid on their passable profit. Okay. okay. So it's paid on it, it's paid on their accessible profit. So and it's at the rate of presently at the rate of three percent. So this money now is collected by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, okay. then remitted to the third fund. Okay, then remitted to the third fund by the federal and uh, by the FIRS through the CBM. Okay, so now this third fund now it has a distribution ratio. Okay, so I guess it is 50 25 there about. So 50 to the, or 40, 30, 30. So the highest rate goes to the university, then 25 to the polytechnics, then 25 to the uh, 
college of education colleges okay so that is the sharing ratio so it is from those money that they build your as uh, your senate building or your classrooms so the ones you as the ones you, you see in Yabatec, okay so are the monies Yabatec, the fund Yabatec we see from the third fund okay so for those projects so some of them are you know for school bus and the likes okay so that's that's it then we have also economic stability then we have harmonization of economic objectives you know among others so then we have task cuts so the 10 task cuts means that the government takes away less of people's own money so as to enable them to spend more of their money in accordance with their choices instead of government taking it from them uh, in form of tasks so they allow them to make the choices for them especially where accountability for taxes collected and spent left much to be desired so task cut means that so the government in a way okay allow people uh to to pay minimal tasks okay to pay what to pay minimal tasks so to enable them to spend their money on whatever they decide to okay so let's say you earn one million naira now so government may just say okay pay fifty thousand out to us as tax or okay say pay uh twenty five thousand out to us as tax you know you still have like now that are seventy five thousand are left so then you can use the money to do anything you like you out you know get your own car right then in the process of building your own house there are other taxes you, you know you tend to pay too but it will be minimal you understand so in the course of purchasing car and the likes so you know this uh encourage low economic stability okay so because there will be flow of money here and there likes okay so that's that's that then we move to basic concepts in taxation basic concepts in taxation so we have task incidents so task incidents means uh the final place of the task or the person who bears the burden of the task by suffering a loss in his personal disposable income so that is what's the implication of this who bears the burden of this okay so who suffer who suffer this at this task so now government has increased the tax rate for education tax to 30 percent so who suffers it companies okay so it has incidence on companies now in 2020 government increased the validated tax rate from five percent abby from 5% to what? To 7.5%. Okay. So who bears the burden? Consumer. The okay. okay. Consumer of goods and services. That's those that buy the products. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And those enjoying the services. Okay. So consumer of goods and services are the ones are, are the one uh, bearing the Burden of the income. Okay. And generally, for validators, it is the consumer that, that bears the burden. So it has incidence on who? On the what? On the consumer. Okay. So, so we have legal impact and we have effective impact. So, legal impact falls on whoever is legally li or liable to pay the task to the task authority. So, now, in this case, now, for the consumer for, for validated tasks, who is liable to you know to pay the task to the tax authority? It is the vendor. Okay, you know, the vendor charge it, charge you the customer to pay the VAT. Abby. So as a customer, you pay the VAT to your vendor. 
So whether the vendor charge you or did not charge you, the vendor is liable to remit that task to the relevant task authority, which is the FIRS, right? So, and that's why you don't see, because it is an indirect task. So you don't see the FIRS coming to you directly that, hey, Madam, you have consumed so, 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 probably maybe let's say you walk into a restaurant, order for food, you and your family, you consume it there, or probably you take it home, you know, owners demand that the restaurant owner charge you VAT on the goods you purchase from them, okay? But unfortunately, they didn't charge. So when the FRS come, you know, to them for audit, they collect the money from them, irrespective of whether it was charged, it was collected from you or not. So that's the legal incident. But the effective impact of task, okay, falls on whoever finally bears the burden of the task. And in this case, it will be the consumer. So if the restaurant owner charge you, okay, charge you VAT on the food you have consumed, okay, whether you consume it there or you take it home, okay, so then we will say that the effective, okay, effect, okay, the effective impact of the validated task is on what is on you, the consumer. But the legal impact is your is on what is on the restaurant owner, who is the vendor that is the person that is statutorily bound to charge the tax. Then we also have task body. Okay, so task body is the amount of what of income, property, or consumption tax levied on an individual or business. So, like the bad example I use. So the body is on the body is on the consumer. Am I correct? Hello. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. The body is on the consumer because it is the consumer that, that pays the money. And what's that effect? What's the effect does that have? That's what that has. It has an effective impact. Have you? So it has an effective, it has an effective impact. So then income tax bodies are typically satisfied on questions from tax each time he or she is paid. So now when you are working then you do pay a uh, tax to the legal state governments, uh, pay as you earn, which is usually deducted from your salary. Now, if your employer fails to deduct it from you, if your employer fails to deduct it from you, then your employer is bound to pay it whether it was deducted or not. But if eventually deducted from your salary, who bears the burden? Who bears the burden? I do, because my salary is being reduced. Exactly, because that's the salary. So we move to task impact. So this is the effect of task on the production or consumption of the product being tax. For example, I made mention of cigarettes the other time. That if government say okay on any importation of goods uh, of cigarette, we are taking sixty percent of the cost of importation. Sixty percent of the cost of importation as tax. So it means that if I've imported, uh, if the cigarette per unit, the landing cost is let's say hundred naira, okay, and government say okay we are taking VAT or SISD to of 50 and 60% of the landing cost. So it means I'm adding 16 error to this. And don't forget that the importer, we also want to hide his own profits. Let's say 15% margin plus 15 error. So what will now be the selling price of the cigarettes? The selling price of the cigarettes will now be what? 175 naira, isn't it? So now, yes. This will have impact on, on the consumer of the city, isn't it? Yes. It will have impact on the consumer of the city. Because then we now be looking at we now be looking at the ability to ability to purchase. Okay. Ability to 
ability to purchase. So that's when you are looking at purchasing power. Okay, purchasing what? Purchasing power. Oh. Because it now has better. So that's the same part of, of that pass. Yes. Even cash rate, they have no part of So it's about about um, increase. There's no decrease. Don't um, government, don't they decrease their tax? What if they reduce the tax? Yes, reduce it. And if they reduce it to it, we have impact on the consumer because it is a consumption tax. Mm -hmm. tax. As I do, they are indirect tax, so it will have the first impact on no. But if it is income tax, if it is income tax, okay. So income tax we have the first, so it depends, okay. So if it is company, it will have effect on the company, Abby. And if it okay, is can I say sorry, sorry, sir, please. I would like to um understand what I'm getting. So can I say? Now, um, when they um, reduce the tax, I mean, can I call it tax court? Like when they decide not to um, collect much from citizens, is that a tax court? Yes, that is a, that is a tax court. Okay. So we allow you to pay less tax. Okay. So that is a tax court. We allow you to pay less tax. So instead of you paying, Task A, task B, task C. So we say, okay, only pay task A. And if it is only task A you are paying before and the rate is 50%, you now say, okay, we are reducing the tax rate to 20% from 50%. So the cities are now having 30% tax cuts. Do you understand? Because the government has now reduce the tax rate from 50% to 20%. Is that understood? Are you still there? Is that understood? Yes, it is. I am here. I'm here. Sorry, so I'm there we have tax shift. So tax shift is also referred to as tax swap. Okay. It's also referred to as tax swap. So it is a change in taxation that eliminates or reduces one or several taxes and establishes or increases others while keeping the overall revenue. So in 2020, when the finance act of 2019 was used, so the VAT rate, the VAT rate was increased from 5% to what? To 7.5%. Okay, then we have the company income tax. Which has always been at a flat rate of 30 percent. That was what that was uh, amended. Okay, so we now have 30 percent for companies with revenue of 100 million and above. Okay, then we have 20 percent for companies with revenue of between 25 million to 100 million, uh, and we have zero percent. For companies with less than less than twenty five, less than twenty five million, you understand. So it means now that any company that is that the revenue is between zero and twenty five million naira, they are not they paying tax. income tax. Income tax, okay. You understand? So they are not paying income tax. So in that same year, that same year, that value added tax was increased. So indirectly, government exempted some people from uh, some company from paying income tax. Abby? Yes. Then well, increase the what? The value tax for that companies. Am I making yes. any sense? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can see that as a task shift, task swap. Yes. Mm. Abby. So they introduce yes. incentive in the uh, company income tax act. Then it was they increase the tax rate in the other no, companies. Okay. We understand. Yes, sir. Okay, so then we take tax effect. So tax effect and tax impact are almost similar. Okay. 
So, pass effect is a general term that describes the consequences of a specific pass flow in arrow. And um, almost everything we have there has effects. Okay. So, if there is a change in tax rates, it has effect on the uh, what's it called? The citizen, it's individual or company, isn't it? So yes. that's and when there is a task shift, okay. So the task shift it has effect on corporates on companies. I mean, so some yeah. people are now exempted from paying tasks. Why at the value added task side, everybody tends to pay more, except yeah. you are not consuming anything, and there's no way you cannot consume. So look at that brain, look at that sense. So they know that it's not everyone that owns, uh, no, not all Nigerians that own, own a company, but no Nigerian, even non Nigerian, okay, that we, you know, say that, oh, or choose not to consume anything. So if you're not consuming, you consume service. <laughs> yeah, it was by eight times. So it was this one. It was enter Hey, now. So. If you, if you like, shoes to be fast every day and night. Okay, shoes to be fast every day and night.
remember that it's not your God alone. I do that I know that I am good. That's what I do. I do what I do. Because I am not a problem. Me, me, your dad may have been because I love 